Four months ago, I started on a mission to beat Trackmania Nations Forever blindfolded to see if I could complete my favorite racing game without being able to see. Trackmania Nations Forever has a campaign of 65 tracks, and in order to beat the game, I had to finish every single track. That also includes EO5 Endurance, which is notoriously 60 laps long and takes just under an hour to finish when played at the highest level, and blindfolded, it could take me weeks. But that would be a problem for future virtual to deal with. So far in the blindfolded journey, I'd played for over 50 hours in total, and though it had been a strenuous journey, with many tough jumps and obstacles, I was now closer than ever to the goal, having come halfway through the Red series, and I only had 15 tracks left to beat in the game. So I set out on the final stretch to once and for all be the first person to beat Trackmania Nations Forever blindfolded. First up, there was DO6 Obstacle, a 3 lap track consisting of only wall rides. Going into it, the track looked daunting, but I quickly developed a mixture of listening to when the car shifted gears and counting that made it seem manageable. And as I started driving it, something in me clicked and my visualization of the track became really, really good. <laughs> My feeling on that was just insane. My body was telling me too much airtime, I release, and then I know I'm pretty late, so I tap left. Ooh, that was nice, man. That was nice. Intuition, gut feeling. Whew. It's getting good now. Why not just one-shot this too? Like, why not just one-shot that? Like, why not? Why not? You know? Just, why not? While we're at it. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm actually seeing what I'm doing, even though I'm playing blind right now. I can read it pretty well. Are we going up? Yes. And just like that. And just like that. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. 32 minutes for this? <laughs> Holy shit. Then there was DO7 and DO8 speed, which both didn't take me too long to complete. But the next track, DO9 obstacle, kicked things into high gear with the difficulty. And as the name suggests, there were many obstacles I had to overcome. On DO9, I first had to do two small turns and drive up a massive sculpture where I had to be lined up perfectly straight, or else I wouldn't make it to the top. After many many attempts and about 20 minutes, I finally managed to get past the start. Go? Please? Make it? Oh yes, oh yes, let's go. When playing D09 the intended way, you have to drive a curved sculpture on this track point, but luckily, we managed to find a creative skip where I would first pick up the two rings, then respawn, and try to jump out to the right and land on this road. Then take the checkpoint in reverse. Get the rings. Can try this, but it's not gonna work. Maybe? Oh. Dude, what on earth? What a strat. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Dude. <laughs> I'm in shock. I'm playing so well today. This is crazy. Three minute D09. Three minute D09. Holy man. Next up was D10 race, which wasn't really anything special. 
and only required some advanced rerouting to get me to the finish. But then there was D11 Acrobatic, a track that I had feared going into the project. On D11 Acrobatic, I had to jump and slow down to land perfectly on the first platform, and then do the same for the second one, and also angle my car towards the finish. I quickly found a working count for the first jump, but landing perfectly on the first platform and also having the right angle to make the second jump was a big problem. I did many many attempts that night, always just either barely missing the platform, or when I finally landed I'd drive off. It was starting to get very late into the night, and I was close to giving up, but all of a sudden, the game gave me one final shot at glory. I know I've been here for a while, but I really want to get this. I really want to get this. It's an important patient test. One, two, three, four, five. I think, and this is really think, this is really just gut feeling, do you want to be a millionaire, like 50-50 gut feeling. If I were to win one 50-50, it would be this one, the ultimate 50-50. I think I have to go a little to the right, one right tap, PF and one right tap. That is my final answer, I'm going to go for it, please be correct. The 50-50 master. I lose like one billion of them, but I win the most important one. That day was a great continuation to the project. I'd finished six tracks in total, and I went and got some good rest before continuing the next day on D12 speed. D12 speed is a full speed track, meaning many parts have to be driven without the ability to slow down. So in the start, I had to do a precise chain of inputs to clear a big jump. Two, three. Okay, nice. Good. Good. Uh, let's see here. So we'll do the safe strat. Nice. That was pretty that was pretty quick. Are we there? We are. Wait for the unhug. Good. Now it's a five count. One, two, Three, ah, uh, on two. Yeah, so that should be enough. Okay. Then after making it past the wall ride, I was at the final checkpoint with only one zigzag section to go, which ended up taking me another painstaking 20 minutes of trying. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, dude, get in. Did I finish? There's no way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My god. Oh my god. Screw that. <laughs> what a puzzle. But at last, I completed D12 speed and had a good start to the next day. D13 and D14 also went by very fast, and I managed to finish both tracks within the hour. I had only 6 tracks left in the challenge, but this is where the difficulty starts to ramp up. The next track was D15 Endurance, a 10 lap dirt track with big open areas and tons of cacti to crash in. The world record on D15 is 7 minutes, but driving this track blindfolded could easily take me several hours. I did a lot of preparation and practice for D15, but finally I felt pretty confident and mentally prepared to tackle it. I started out strong on D15 with the first lap only taking me 7 minutes, and shortly after that I got the second lap in at 11 minutes. Then 
My third lap was incredible, taking just 2 minutes and 50 seconds. The pace of each lap really came down to how fast I could find the checkpoint in the open area, and so far I was making really good progress, and I got the fourth lap down in just 7 minutes. Then on the fifth lap, I found the checkpoint almost immediately, and I was on course for another great lap. But then disaster struck. As I jumped off the dirt uphill, I did a small tap to the left, which sent my car off the road and perfectly towards the wrong checkpoint. And to my horror, I picked it up. But it didn't really matter. Wait, wait, no, hang on. No, 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 bad. That's bad. I had just skipped a checkpoint, my worst nightmare. If I continued driving from here, the lap would not count. So I had to backtrack and try to find the checkpoint I skipped, or else all my progress would be lost. Is it not? Did I skip a checkpoint? Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got the checkpoint. Uh, I would have I would have gotten it by by now if I didn't have if I didn't have it already. But um <gasps> No. I almost skipped. Oh my god. Okay, this is going to be tricky now. I have to do two parts in one. Good check. Honestly, good check. Whew. I would have been so fucked. Luckily, I managed to find the checkpoint I skipped, but I wasn't out of the dirt yet because now I had to do two parts in one go, and if I failed, I'd respawn all the way back to the furthest checkpoint, since I already had the other one. It was a big mental strain to recover the mistake, but after about 20 minutes, I finally managed to reach the next checkpoint and continue the run. That was scary. I thought I had to restart and start over and lose all the progress, but... At least we can continue now. For the next lap, I was back on pace and I completed it in just 5 minutes. But amidst all of this, I also lost count of the overall lap total. So 30 minutes and a few laps later, I had a nice surprise at the finish line. Oh, that was the last lap! Oh shit! Okay! I, I thought I had one more. And with that, I'd now beaten all the white, green, blue, and red tracks. The first 60 out of 65 tracks in the game. And now there was only the black tracks left. 5 tracks, all very difficult in terms of endurance and precision. And the first track up was EL1 Obstacle, which just by looking at it might seem impossible. This track is a full speed stun track with big jumps and drops and loops that require you to keep full speed throughout the track. And it meant I'd have to string together perfect inputs for over 30 seconds blindfolded, which was a clear no-go. Luckily though, I analyzed the track and found a potential alternative route. I'm not gonna be driving the entire wall ride, trying to do all this perfect, all this perfect, just not. It's not gonna work. So my idea here, drive the boosters, jump out of the wall ride, And fly into here, into the tunnel. Hear me out, hear me out. After making that jump, I will listen for this booster. And when I hear it close enough on my right ear, I will steer to the right and get this checkpoint. After getting this checkpoint, I will drive and pick up this checkpoint. And then, when I have this checkpoint, I will drop down here, I gather speed, and jump here, so from this over to the road. Uh, here are the boosters here, line up for these rings, collect them, and then I will, with speed, drive, jump into the gap, uh, keep speed and finish. That is the easiest way to finish this map blindfolded. Easiest. So that was the plan. The biggest obstacle in my way was to jump out of the wall ride into the tube because even if I landed it, I was so disoriented from the flip, and I had to find a road without any safe edges next to it. But having come this far, I was willing to go a little further, and try to overcome this challenge. I decided to give it some attempts that night, 
and after about 20 minutes, I had my first jump into the tube. But how would I know where to go now? Well, I had one trick up my sleeve. Boosters in Trackmania make an ambient humming noise that gets louder and louder the closer you get to the booster. So by listening for this sound, I could more accurately decipher which way my car was facing. But it doesn't stop there, because the audio in Trackmania is three-dimensional. So if a booster is to the right of your car, you'll hear it more loudly on your right headphone speaker. After landing in the tube, I tried listening through only one headphone at a time to see which side I could hear it loudest on, and then I followed that noise. Using this information, I found out which way my car was facing, and roughly the angle of it too. But knowing exactly when to steer to the right and go onto the road would be a problem. Do I dare to go further? Nah, I gotta commit to the right here. I think I'm there. Oh? Wait, I'm so early. Yo. That is wild. That is actually wild. All right, let's go. We have a chance to finish this. But by some miracle, I managed to get past the hardest part on EO1 in just 25 minutes of trying, and on my first landing inside the tube. And though I still had some difficult parts to contend with, I felt confident that I would finish the track that night. I continued on and I quickly one-shot the wall ride checkpoint, which felt like a breeze in comparison to what I just passed. Then I had to collect two ring checkpoints, which took me a long time, since the jump angle was way more precise than I had thought when planning it out. But finally, I had a chance at getting them too. Okay, please. I'm stuck in one direction. And if I go forwards, I go down a hill. Okay. Good, I know exactly where I am. Oh my god. Yep. I actually got the rings. We only need to finish now. Unreal, man. Absolutely unreal. And with that tiny miracle, I finished EA1 that night after only an hour, which was a track I expected would take me days to complete. I once again went and got some sleep and continued the next day on EO2. From above, this track looks complicated, but it's connected all the way from the start to the finish, so just finishing it became rather doable. My strategy became to hug the walls and count the checkpoints and then switch sides whenever needed. And though it took a while, it was a rather easy finish in just under 20 minutes. Three maps left to go, next up being EO3 Endurance. This is a three lap dirt track with big open areas, which once again meant I had to get very creative to finish it. The track ended up taking me over two hours, but there really wasn't too much interesting to show. It was just a grind I had to get through. But with EO3 out of the way, we now got to EO4 Obstacle, the penultimate track in the campaign. Apart from EO5 Endurance, this is the track I was the most worried about in the entire Blindfolded project, because this track has everything. 
It has a part with switching platforms like the one on BO9 Acrobatic, which took me 6 hours to pass on its own. Then another part of the track has long platforms, without any safe walls next to them, like on CO9 Race, which alone took me 8 hours to pass. Then take into consideration the many sequences of jumps and turns where you have to keep speed and… yeah, you've got yourself a pretty difficult track blindfolded. I knew that on paper EO4 Obstacle was finishable blindfolded, but actually doing it in a run would require some incredible ingenuity from me and my community. In order to finish the track, I decided to go for an alternative route that would allow me to skip driving on the platforms without walls as much as possible, and save myself some trouble. But it also meant I'd have to do a few additional hard jumps to complete the track. But still, it was the lesser of two evils. So with a lot of practice on this route, I started trying to finish EO4 Obstacle blindfolded. The first thing I had to do was turn around on the start, and try to reach this platform just behind it, to pick up the first checkpoint in the alternative route. From there, I had to jump back to the start block, figure out which direction my car was angled, and do a precise series of jumps to go through this ring and land on the platform. This part took me around one and a half hours, but finally I had this attempt. Huh. I thought I was on the left wall. Can I take it back? I actually was on the left wall. I'm very sure. Nice. After making it up on the platform, it was time for another strategy that we conceived of. The slinky. The plan here was to first locate the corner of the platform, then turn fully backwards and left until the car hit the wall, and then drive forwards and right until the car hit the wall again, much like a slinky rolling down a set of stairs. After doing it three times, my car was now perfectly aligned for a drop down into the next checkpoint, and all I had to do was clutch it. Okay, alright, okay. God bless this map is difficult, man. Holy shit. And that was the first part done. Now only 8 more to go. Luckily for me though, I was picking up the pace, and somehow managed to do this next part in only 20 minutes. A bit too much. That is the second hard part of this map. Done. After that, I had to pick up this ring, and the only way of doing it was driving on the platforms without walls. But I felt great about my progress so far, and I knew that with a little patience, I'd get it soon enough. <laughs> okay, okay. With that out of the way, I had to reverse and pick up the last ring, which really wasn't too hard. But now the real struggle begins. In order to make further progress on the track, I had to make it from this checkpoint all the way down to this checkpoint. The usual way to do this is to drive on the platforms without walls, doing tight turns for about 20 seconds, and then dropping down on this block, driving perfectly straight, and steering left to jump into this gap and reach the checkpoint. I realized there was just no way I'd manage to do that blindfolded. So in order to get past this, I thought of a very intricate workaround. First I had to reverse all the way until I hit the back wall. Then I went forwards again and steered left to crash into this sign, so that the car would shift gears just before I had to steer to the right. Then I'd do one precise right turn, one left turn, and try to land on this platform. Once I landed here, I'd hug the wall all the way to the corner and set up backwards. And then I performed another slinky strat, 
crashing back and forth five times, which ultimately put me facing the wall perfectly above the block I had to get to. Then I had to drive backwards, drop down, land on the platform, drive backwards for about two seconds, and stop the car. If I managed to do all of this correctly, the car would now shift gears just before the end of the platform, and that was again my sound cue for when to steer to the left. But I'd still have to make that jump into the gap. I spent several hours on this checkpoint, trying to get it over and over and over again. I got to the final platform a few times, but I struggled to time the steering correctly. And then I had this attempt, an attempt where I finally felt like I did everything correctly. In reality, I failed to jump from the platform, landing on the grass, and I could tell that my car was upside down. But in my mind, I didn't land on the grass. I envisioned that I'd made it through the gap. I could hear the ambience of the booster, and I was convinced that I just landed in front of the checkpoint upside down. And when upside down, the Trackmania car has a very slow default movement. So I thought there was a chance that the car might roll into the checkpoint eventually. There was no way for me to know what actually happened, but I knew I'd be kicking myself if I reset just before the checkpoint line. That night, around 1,000 people watched a blindfolded man getting ever more excited about a car lying upside down on the grass, getting closer and closer to the booster. But after a while, my stubborn self realized it was becoming more and more likely I was just on the grass, and I decided I had to reset and keep trying. And thankfully, only a little while later, I got this attempt. Good. No weird angle, please. Okay, good. All right, let's go. Let's make this the one. It's gonna depend on our angle, but I'm feeling the last part. Like when to steer. Very awkward. Uh, we could be tilted slightly diagonally here. Very likely. But uh, still gonna play it as it's good. I said it. I said this was the one. I was feeling it. We actually got that checkpoint on EO4. Like, how crazy is that? After over three hours of struggling, I'd finally made it past the checkpoint. I was feeling really happy and relieved to have made it, but it was a short celebration, because the struggle was far from over. Immediately after getting past that hard part, I was faced with this. Three platform transitions followed by a jump to the left through this gap. Having been blind now for 6 hours straight, my concentration and focus was getting worse, and it seemed like it wasn't going to happen. But all of a sudden, I heard and felt that I had the correct setup on the uphill, and I decided to go all in and just ballpark the inputs. Like this is- oh, I'm gonna run this. Okay. Okay, okay. My god. My god. That was out of nowhere. We got it. That was the ballpark of all bar ballpark checkpoints, man. Jesus Christ. I don't know how far in we are, but... I'm gonna tell you guys one thing. 
I am not ending stream until I finish this now. We are gonna finish this. I was now almost seven hours into the track, feeling exhausted, but also getting closer and closer to the finish. I quickly got to the next checkpoint, which was rather easy. But from there, I now had to land on a platform, preserve a good amount of speed, and do the jump thereafter. I spent about 40 minutes having the wrong idea of how much to steer, but when I finally understood it, I successfully managed to reach the final checkpoint on the track. Please, 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 please. God bless. Okay. Screw that previous checkpoint and let's finish this map. We are on the last checkpoint, ladies and gentlemen. On the last checkpoint of this route, all I had to do was one final jump to reach the finish platform. But having been blind for nearly eight hours straight, my mind was deteriorating. I tried my best to play, but my understanding of where I was on the track was getting worse and worse. And I eventually became so tired that I started to hallucinate and even forgot which track I was playing. What am I thinking? I, uh, I thought I crashed into a tree here and I broke the tree. So in order to uh, keep driving, I went left of the tree and then I snapped back to reality and I was like, what, what, what are you on about? That it's EO4. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that makes sense. No trees, huh? No breakable trees, damn. I would occasionally snap a bit back into my senses and get some close attempts, but I knew that it really was not healthy to push onwards in these conditions. And after 10 hours blindfolded, without any breaks at all, I had to take off the blindfold, get some rest, and return the next day. Okay. Go! Go! Oh my god. Okay, chill. Chill, chill, chill. Uh, I know that I kind of hit the back wall. I did not hit the left wall. That, ladies and gentlemen, is actually the front wall. Because the arrow signs make a different noise. So, if we just press backwards here, uh, it should be a finish. Here we go. <sighs> there it is. There it is. EO4 obstacle blindfolded. It's done. Let's go. It's actually done. 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours, chat. It's over. Let's go. And with that, there was now just one track left to complete in the campaign, E05 Endurance. From an overview, this track might look rather peaceful, but it is notoriously 60 laps long, and takes almost an hour to finish when played normally. And blindfolded, it would be challenging to just complete a single lap. The track starts out with a long straight part, followed by two turns to the right, and a jump through some rings. Here my strategy became to press forward, allow the wall to readjust my car towards the boosters, and then I'd still have to do one perfect right steer to make the jump to get to the first checkpoint. After that, you go past a long platform part, where all I had to do was keep track of which wall my car was hugging against, and when the time was right, steer to get onto the road. From there, I could get to the final checkpoint on the map. But this checkpoint is where my troubles began. The checkpoint starts out with an uphill, followed by a downhill and a turn to the right. After the turn, you drive over this red block, which shuts off your car's engine until you cross the next ring checkpoint. You then have to drop down perfectly straight, do a small turn to the right, and then left. Jump through the ring, land on the platform, and while preserving speed, do another jump to get up to the starting platform. And then repeat 59 more times. At first it may not seem too difficult, but this was over 15 seconds of continuous driving blindfolded, without the ability to slow down or crash at any point after the freewheeling block, else I wouldn't have enough speed to clear the jumps. 
I knew that my main downfall on other maps had been inconsistency, so to make EO5 Endurance finishable, my counting had to be as precise as possible. For this, I experimented with a lot of different rhythms, and looked for something that would hit a lot of key timings. And eventually I found something I liked. But monotonous counting can be a lot harder to do perfectly than, say, singing. So my plan was to sing a song in my head instead of counting 1, 2, 3, and so on. I went on Google and found a website where I could click my mouse in a rhythm and get to know exactly what BPM that is. And the count I was comfortable with came in at exactly 70 beats per minute. What popular songs go at exactly 70 beats per minute, you might ask? Well, it just so happens that Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody matched my counting perfectly. For the next few days, I drove the track over and over in practice, refining my turns to the sound of Mama, three, four, five. Didn't mean to make you cry. Like it goes, it goes pretty good. So you, you, you count at that pace, right? And then when you land, you just hold right and you get to the final platform. I've tried all sorts of setups. And on the 9th of December, over one month after starting the project, I went for my first lap of EO5 Endurance. But despite all my planning and preparation, I got a big reality check when I tried to drive EO5 live. This jump was not at all easy, and though I did get close many times, I didn't complete a single lap on the first day, mainly due to hesitating on the final platform landing. I let it rest and returned the next day, where finally, after another 30 minutes, I got this attempt. You cannot crash any point here, and you will not have the speed anymore. So it makes this so difficult. It has to be perfect 60 times. That's one. That's one lap. Okay. Good. We got one. <laughs> 59 to go! Like, what's really the problem here? Easy cruising, boys. My first completed lap. For the first time proving that the track was finishable blindfolded. But now I had to do it again. 59 more times to get a completed run. I quickly got back to the last checkpoint, and 20 minutes later, I managed to do the entire blindfolded part once again but I heard that the car landed somewhat awkwardly on the final platform, and I now had to figure out which way it was facing. It took a lot of thinking and deduction to understand where to go. My chat would tell you I was going insane at this point, because while I was trying to listen for the booster in front of the finish, I could swear I was hearing it behind me, which confused everyone who was watching. But I had no other option than to follow my instinct, and I began driving towards where I heard the booster noise coming from going closer and closer to the edge. And just when I was about to drop off, front wheels literally hanging off the edge, I realized that something was off. And I decided to back off instead of committing further. I kept driving backwards until I suddenly heard the booster more clearly, not really knowing how I ended up there, but knowing what I had to do to get into the finish. And like that, I completed my second lap. I continued playing that day for another three hours and managed to finish one more lap. The next day, someone in my Discord figured out what had happened. I thought that I was going insane, hearing boosters in places where they weren't. But below the final platform, there are these unconnected turbines on the sculptures, and they make the exact same ambient noise as boosters, which was messing with my brain. But knowing this, and that I just had to be more decisive and commit, I was making more progress. 
The third day, I managed to finish four laps. And the day after that, I managed to finish five laps. Then, on the fifth day, I managed a total of eight laps. And with that, I was now one third of the way through EO5 Endurance. But though I was making good progress, I wasn't progressing fast enough. It was the 16th of December, and Christmas was right around the corner, and I really wanted to be done by then. The next day, I managed only three laps. And that same day, another unfortunate thing happened. 24 hours into the track, Trackmania started drastically lagging. People were telling me it was like watching a PowerPoint presentation. And although I myself wasn't bothered by it, I didn't want the next 32 laps to be unwatchable either. So I had to take off the blindfold and figure out what was going on. As it turns out, it was most likely a memory leak. My frame rate was stable and completely fine, but the game was very stuttery and unwatchable. I decided to restart my PC, return the next day, drive normally all the way up until lap 28, and continue where I left off, as in essence it was still the same thing. And that next day, I returned stronger than ever. That day, something in me felt different, and I was quickly able to change together lap after lap after lap and I got up to a total of 13 laps that day. The next day, I matched my performance from the day before, getting 12 more laps on the board. I was now at 53 out of 60 laps, and I knew that it was all coming down to December 20th. With 8 laps to go, this was the final day in the project. So how about we end where we began one, over one month ago? Back in November, I started on this. And we met some hurdles. There was B09, which was impossible, but we beat that. There was C09, which was also impossible, but somehow we beat that. Then there was C13, also impossible, but we beat that. Then there was D05, also impossible, but we beat that. Then there was E01, also impossible. But we beat that. And EO4, completely impossible. We beat that too, and now there's just one track left. EO5, eight laps to go, which was supposed to be impossible. But I think in a couple of hours we will be done. Tonight we are streaming until we beat EO5. Toward the left side here. Let's go. Okay. Good save, good save. Six more laps. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay, this lap is really fast. Dude, if I one-shot this, it's like a two-minute lap. Oh, that's insane. Oh, that's insane. Four more to go. Four more laps. Come on. Three to go. Three to go. Two more times across the jump, man. Two more times. Ooh. 
ladies and gentlemen, there is just one lap left of EO5 Endurance Blindfold. Let's do it. One shot? No way. Okay, one more jump. One more clean landing on the road. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> yes, man! We did it! We did it! We fucking did it! We beat Trekmania blindfolded. 124 hours. <laughs> it's done. It's actually done. We are victorious. We did it. While it may seem like a dumb challenge to you who's watching this, I can tell you that few things have ever brought me as much joy as the moment I crossed the finish line on EO5 Endurance. In the project, I had to overcome so many unthinkably difficult, impossible tracks. And now I'd finally reached my goal. Two months earlier, I never could have anticipated that this would have been the most demanding Trackmania project I've ever done, but it now sits as one of my all-time best gaming memories, and I will cherish it for a long time. As this project now is over, I'd like to end it with some words of encouragement. Most of the challenges that I do aren't so much about Trackmania, the game itself. It's just the outlet that I use to experience mastery. These challenges are about me, about applying myself to a goal and doing what I have to to see it through. Starting out on a journey that at first feels impossible, and committing the necessary hours of work and patience to see it through, until you at long last reach the finish line, is one of the greatest feelings there is, and I highly recommend it. So I'd like to invite you to set a goal for yourself. It doesn't have to be about playing blindfolded or have anything to do with video games at all, Make it something that means something to you personally, something that you want to accomplish. And I wish you the best of luck, and really hope that it'll bring you the same joy these similar goals have brought me. And now, to round it off, I can finally say, I beat Trackmania Nations Forever blindfolded. Thanks for watching.